I want to talk about the concept of a bad decision in boxing or what many people refer to as a robbery. Anyone who's followed my channel for more than a year will know that I very rarely use that word to describe a decision. In fact, I think it's by far the most overused term in boxing. More often than not, it's used in a very hasty and reactionary fashion. But first of all, how do we define a robbery? People seem to have different definitions, but my definition of it is a fight in which one guy clearly wins at least seven rounds in a 12 round bout, but he doesn't get the decision. So there are at least seven rounds which he obviously dominates, which are totally unambiguous and couldn't plausibly be seen in favor of the other fighter, but somehow the judges do. That is actually a relatively rare occurrence in boxing, in televised bouts at least. What's far more common is close competitive fights with a lot of swing rounds in which the house fighter is given the benefit of the doubt. Now in a fair world, the house fighter wouldn't get the benefit of the doubt in those types of fights any more than 50% of the time. But in our unfair reality, it's closer to 70% of the time. So that is evidence of bias, yes, but it's bias which, on a case-by-case -case basis, usually falls within the realm of plausible denial. Let's take Callum Smith versus John Ryder as an example, a fight I got a tremendous amount of stick for because I said it was not a robbery. Public perception is often influenced by expectation. If going into a fight, you expect one guy to dominate and barely get hit, but the fight actually turns out to be highly competitive and the favorite is getting hit a lot, the shock of that can warp your perception. You start to hyper-focus on everything the opponent is doing, every punch he's landing, and ignore what the favorite is doing. That's what happened in the Callum Smith, John Ryder fight. People were so surprised by the success John Ryder was having, and they were so focused on it that they managed to blank out most of the punches that Callum Smith was landing. Go back and watch that fight today. You will see Callum Smith landing lots of punches throughout that fight, which people were totally ignoring. This phenomenon is often compounded by the reaction of the commentators. If the perception of the commentators is warped in this fashion and it manifests in what they're saying, that then influences the perception of the viewers. This is why I like to watch a fight at least twice and score it with the commentary off because I don't want to be influenced in this way. Fights often look very different when you watch them the second time around without commentary. The Haney Lomachenko fight was not a robbery by my definition. The judges, in my opinion, were biased. Yes, they were giving Haney all the swing rounds, but a lot of fans were biased too. They were giving Lomachenko all the swing rounds and there were a lot of swing rounds in this fight. And the thing with swing rounds is, they can reasonably be scored in favor of either man. Lomachenko did not clearly and unambiguously win seven or more rounds in that fight. And neither did Haney, of course. And that's why it's perfectly reasonable to score the fight in favor of either man. There's also the fact that Lomachenko had a few big rounds late in the fight, rounds which he clearly dominated, whereas the rounds Haney won were more marginal and therefore not as memorable. Lomachenko is also a more popular fighter than Devin Haney, so it stands to reason that the majority of fan bias would be in his favor. You've got people like Paulie Malinagi saying that the betting odds going into the 12th round were in favor of Lomachenko, and that's somehow supposed to prove that he was dominating the fight. But in the real world, we know the odds are influenced by the direction in which the public are betting. It's based on public perception. If public perception is off, the odds will usually be off. And in the real world, we also know that Malinagi has beef with Devin Haney. They've been going back and forth for at least the past year. Malinagi is in his feelings here. And I like Paulie Malinagi. I think he's a great commentator, a great analyst, and I think it was disgraceful the way he was fired by Showtime, but he's not infallible. He's very emotionally invested in this battle he's been having with Devin Haney. So I take his comments with a pinch of salt in regards to this fight. If the judges scorecards for Haney Lomachenko were split, so two in favor of Haney by a point and one in favor of Lomachenko by a point or vice versa, or 
if the fight was declared a draw, that would be an accurate reflection of how close this fight was. The problem is, the way the judges actually scored it did not reflect that, especially the one judge who gave Haney eight rounds, including the 10th round, which was one of Lomachenko's best. Teddy Atlas has actually called that judge out, and rightfully so. And by the way, Atlas doesn't think that a Haney win is unreasonable at all. But as I just described, it's the margins he won by that Atlas finds so suspicious. And again, I agree with that. The boxing politics worked in Haney's favor here. I'm not arguing with anyone about that, but the people saying that Lomachenko clearly won and scoring it to Haney is completely unreasonable are simply way off. And that includes Lomachenko himself, by the way. The fans love Lomachenko so much that they gave him a pass when he said that he got jobbed on the scorecards against Teofimo Lopez. Lomachenko was running around saying that he beat Lopez, making all these excuses about injuries and whatnot, giving Tio absolutely no credit at all. And the fans just turned a blind eye to it. The reality is, Lomachenko is a sore loser. And I like Lomachenko, always have liked him, but he showed against Lopez that he's a sore loser. And here against Devin Haney, he's actually claiming that he won 11 rounds in the fight. 11 rounds. I mean, come on, bro. That's worse than Josh Taylor against Jack Cattrall. That's like Lopez against Cambosis. Tio and his dad were saying that they won 10 rounds or something in that fight. Ridiculous. The most biased scoring of a fight is usually done by the two fighters who participate in it. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Are you sick and tired of the mainstream mindset? Does the dogmatic conformity and pathological ignorance have you tearing your hair out in frustration? then don't be alone. Come and join our brotherhood on Patreon. We stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. You'll gain access to my weekly topical podcast where we take more deep dives than Jacques Cousteau on an endless variety of subjects. There's also videos, interviews, live Q&As, as well as a vast back catalog of previous episodes, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen via the Patreon app or download in high quality MP3. Connect with myself and hundreds of other members in our Element chat group. There's no contract, no commitment. You can cancel at any time and it's cheaper than a Mickey D's McMuffin. Just head to my Patreon page via the link below this video and select the tier called the Brotherhood of Reason. I'll see you over there.